Hi there, you are watching a video of shell and tube heat exchangers for industrial plants. The design conditions of a pressure vessel is the set of parameters and input data necessary for the selection of the materials, the selection of components, calculation of the components and the fabrication process. It is very easy to fall into the error that the design of an equipment without perfectly stated the design conditions. This only leads to rework as far as the design con is concerned and obviously this rework translates into more man hours. Pressure and temperature are just two of the many design constraints that should be taken into account. Some of them are temperature, as in ambient temperature, MDMT, design temperature, pressure, operating, design, mouth, test pressure, Loading, dead loads, lift loads, cyclic loading, corrosion allowance or liquid level, wind and seismic conditions, a steam out, hydrostatic desk requirements, transportation and lifting conditions. Material selection and pressure vessel design depend on these design conditions. To arrive to an adequate design of a pressure vessel, the different temperatures acting on the system must be evaluated. These temperatures are the minimum temperature, the maximum or design temperature, and the minimum design metal temperature, MDMT. The minimum temperature at which the pressure vessel will operate is a minimum value of the minimum process temperature. This information must be provided by the customer or the process department. And secondly, the minimum temperature of the site. The minimum temperature of the site is determined based on historical data. The maximum temperature, also known as design temperature. Many times, especially for slender columns, we will not have a single design temperature but a gradient. Considering the hottest as the design temperature would be too conservative and could bring too many associated costs. Since there is a temperature gradient between the hottest and the coldest point, it is necessary to assess the affected area and selecting materials and thicknesses accordingly. Minimum design metal temperature is the minimum temperature at which the material is able to resist against brittle fracture. It is a property of the materials and it is evaluated according to section UCS 66 of the code. The difference between the operating temperature TO and the design temperature TD is a safety margin that exists because it is usually difficult to establish design conditions without total certainty. The difference between the operating and design conditions takes into account unwanted excursions during the transients that occur at the startup of a plant. When the design temperature, TD, is not available, the following can be used as a first approximation. TO plus 10% or TO plus 15 Celsius degrees or 65 Celsius degrees as a minimum. The pressure to which the system must operate is one of the most important design conditions. However, 
it should be remembered that it does not always govern the design of a pressure vessel. There are many other types of loads acting on the vessel. Usually, when we are dealing with pressure, operating, design or test, this value is referring to the gauge or relative pressure, G between parentheses. The difference between the operating PO and design pressure PD is a safety margin. This margin exists because sometimes it is difficult to establish operating conditions with certainty. If we need to design but only the operation, operating conditions are known, a workaround could be as follows. If PO, the operating pressure, is higher than 20 bars, the design pressure is 1.1 uh, times the operating pressure. Alternatively, if the operating pressure is less than 20 bars, the design pressure is going to be the operating pressure plus 2 bars. When determining the internal design pressure, P, the hydrostatic column, in other words, the hydrostatic pressure due to the fluid column, must be taken into consideration, especially when the liquid level is high, for example, in vertical cylindrical pressure vessels. A vessel must be under external pressure due to many reasons. The most frequent occurs when under operating conditions the equipment gets depressurized or operates under vacuum. At that moment the atmospheric pressure is acting outside the pressure vessel. The MAUP or maximum allowable working pressure is the maximum continuous working pressure at which the vessel would operate assuring that the equipment will not deform plastically. The MAUP is not the same as the design pressure. Adop adopted thicknesses usually exceed the required thickness by calculation. This excess is what generates the pressure jump up to the MAUP. Hydrostatic test, commonly known as hydraulic test. It is a routine test used when the material thickness of the pressure vessel and allowable stresses are well defined and there are no significant unknown factors in the mechanical aspects of the design. Attention should be paid when the pressure vessel should be installed in a country with regulations more stringent than the ASME code. For example, the PED directive for equipment to be installed in the European Union. Loadings or forces are the causes of stresses in pressure vessels. These forces and moments must be isolated both to determine where they apply in the vessel and when they apply in the process. Loadings may be applied over a large portion of the vessel or over a local area of the vessel. Remember, both general and local loads can produce stresses. These stresses are additive and define the overall state of stress in the vessel or component. Stresses from local loads must be added to stresses from general loadings. These combined stresses are then compared to the allowable stress. For the case of loads transmitted by pipelines, there are numerous publications that give us the load values in nozzles for general cases. This can be seen on the screen, for example. In most cases, the operating liquid level does not govern the design.
Still, and especially for large horizontal vessels, the loads caused by the weight of the liquid during normal operation must be considered. Generally speaking, the normal liquid level, NLL, during operation is considered for calculations. However, and from a conservative point of view, the highest liquid level, HLL, sometimes is considered. Some vessels are subjected to periodic repetitions of mechanical and thermal loads and the resulting stresses during their service life. When a vessel is subjected to repeated loadings that could cause failure by the development of progressive fracture, the vessel is considered to be in cyclic service. Stresses caused by external lockout loads are a major concern to designers of pressure vessels. These loads are mainly imposed by piping thermal growth, support loads, erection loads, etc. Stresses induced by local loads must be combined with stresses produced by sustained or permanent loads. External conditions such as wind and seismic and snow are imposed to the vessel according to the equipment installation site. Ideally, a detailed study of the legislation of the place should be carried out. Misreading these values represent a lot of man hours rework. At the beginning of the project, it is essential to estimate the weights of the different components. This consideration is logical and easy to understand. However, it is not easy to estimate all these loads in the early stages of the project, mainly due to the lack of definition of the components. Normally, the weights for the different phases in the life cycle of a pressure vessel are defined in the following way. Fabricated weight, necessary to determine the lifting load, cranes and equipment. Empty weight, useful to define the weight of the vessel during a shutdown of the plant. Operating weight, essential to calculate wind and seismic loads acting on the vessel. And finally, the test weight, needed to determine the loads acting on the foundation of the vessel. It is worth mentioning that all these weights described above shall be considered in the non-corroded condition. This way, this way, the loads are conservative, worst case scenario, highest weight. To define the weights mentioned before, the weight of all components, internal and external components, must be defined. Overturning moments and loads at the base of this equipment depend mainly on the weight of the vessel. These values, overturning moment and base shear, must be defined and be available from the very beginning of the project, for the design of the foundation of the equipment mainly. The weight calculation for shells and heads is very simple. For the case of the shell, the weight of the cylinder is determined by considering the thickness and the specific weight of the steel. For heads, the weight of the disc necessary to shape the head is determined. For heat exchangers nozzles, it is normal practice to estimate the weight of the nozzles as a percentage of the shell and heads of the vessel. This percentage is around 10% of the shell weight plus the head's weight. The weight of the tube bundle is one of the most significant of this type of equipment. The weight of the following components must be defined. Tube sheet, tubes, baffles, tie rods, spacers, etc.
Vessel supports are one of the last elements that are designed in a pressure vessel. This is due to the fact that in order to select the thickness of the supporting elements, all the loads acting on the vessel must be known. The weight of the supports is estimated according to minimum thicknesses and job specifications. The weight of the thermal insulation can be significant, particularly in large equipment. This load should be estimated right from the very beginning of the design process to avoid unpleasant surprises. To estimate the weight of the thermal insulation, it is sufficient to check the specific weight of the insulating material using the supplier's catalog and the thickness of the selected insulation.